Welcome back. Poor hygiene and sanitary conditions are some of the leading causes of a number of ailments, especially in rural areas where many lack access to water or toilets. While the Bochi State Government is making an effort to address this, some communities are still a far cry away as they lack basic amenities. Our community report tonight examines the life of residents of Kataru in Bochi State. These footsteps are those of locals of Kutaru Ohonfada community in Tafar Balewa local government area of Bochi State heading to the farm. <laughs> Among them is Lydia, a 65 year old farmer. I feed myself and my family with the yields. I don't farm for commercial purposes. I can only sell the crop when the quantity is more. Kutaru Oham father wears a serene look. A typical village life is evident here. The children can be seen pounding grains for the day's meals, while others take shelter under the trees. The village, dominated by modest buildings and surrounded by farmlands, has been in existence for over 10 decades. There are over 40 houses in this community, and almost all the houses, except three, are built without toilet facilities. Because of poverty, we don't have anything to... We don't have something to build houses with toilets. That is why, since we are using it, you are, using, you are going bush. No doubt, there are several diseases caused by poor hygiene. In case of an outbreak, the community lacks a healthcare facility. <laughs> Staying healthy is a challenge for them, as the only source of drinking water is this stream. This building with an improvised seating arrangement is a proposed nursery school donated by the church in the community. It is still under construction. All attempts made to get the view of the Commission of the Local Government and the Ketika Chairman of Tafar Balewa Local Government Area failed. For now, various NGOs are carrying out a sensitization campaign ahead of the 2019 election. We're doing that by engaging the political parties, but also engaging the people to say, please, when somebody comes to ask for your vote, ask them what plans they have for water, sanitation and hygiene. While the people wait for help, it is hoped that government and other key players will redouble their efforts to ensure that Kutaru Oham father and other communities get a new lease of life. The Nasarawa state government has commenced the construction of Kilema Road after several pleas by residents. According to Governor Tanko Almakura, this gesture is a parting gift to the people of Lafia, which will reduce the gridlock at the city center. <laughs> Governor Tanko Almakura visits the location and pledges to deliver on the promises of the state government. As part of my parting gifts to the people of Lafia, it is to ensure that this road is constructed before I exit because it's going to uh, relieve Latvia tremendously in terms of congestion and in terms of uh, sanity in traffic movement. Work has commenced despite the rains to ameliorate the plight of the people. Residents commend the government. Erosion have destroyed this road all, and uh, this man have the mind and he is doing the work now. In fact, I really appreciate him for the kind gesture that he just gave us in this area because to me, I am going to enjoy the benefit of what is happening here because my house is close to the road. Governor Tanko Almakura inspects ongoing work <laughs> and reveals he is satisfied with the pace of work and as for him, 
the residents deserve the best. We need to have a permanent solution to this problem. That's why we intend to make asphalt with double drains that will take all the water away from the road and give the residents the, the best uh, for their movements. The government wants the seven-kilometer road to be completed before the end of the year to enable ease of movement in the state capital. The U.S. mission in Nigeria, in collaboration with American investors, has organized a roundtable discussion on reforming the Niger Delta through mechanized agriculture. The discussion with the theme, Niger Delta Agricultural Development, The Way Forward, reviews strategies for extending agriculture mechanization to local farmers, empowering Niger Delta youths through agribusiness, and expanding the agriculture value chain to smallholder farms. Ahead of the round table, U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Stuart Simonton, also paid a courtesy call on the governor of Delta State, Ifai Okowa. The Niger Delta Amnesty Program was set up by the late President Umaru Yaradua to provide a platform for repentant militants to undergo various skill acquisition trainings in order to earn a legitimate livelihood. The United States Ambassador to Nigeria, Stuart Symington, alongside some investors, are received with cheers by ex-militants at an agricultural training site in Delta State. The diplomat reminds the trainees about the importance of hard work. So the chance, you guys, is this. By your success, show Nigeria itself how to pivot. As you draw up water, so you must draw up life, and as you spread it over the whole field, so you must spread it over all of Nigeria. It is then agreed that true development requires a collective effort. Nigeria is blessed by God Almighty. We are strange. Let our agreement, well, let government create job opportunities because we cannot go back back and fold our hands. Why our family responsibility is upon us. Accompanied by the American investors, Ambassador Symington takes a tour of the farm, inspecting the various mechanized equipment and irrigation techniques. We've talked a lot in life about sustainable development. I want Nigerians to always think about profitable development. We've talked about developing countries. I want every Nigerian to think about opportunity developing countries or business developing countries. Because what will really make something last is when you can sell the maize and the tomatoes and the rice at a profit. And the moment that you can do that, every farmer knows, every other farmer is going to copy you. And it will increase like wildfire. And that's the only way to keep up with these future generations that are coming. The American ambassador also visits the Delta State governor with their discussions focused on involving more Nigerian youths in the skill acquisition program. Many believe that if more youths are trained in various skills, the unemployment and poverty ratio in the country may reduce significantly. And now to the arts. Contemporary artist uh, Stephen Osuchuku's love for waste materials such as charcoal has allowed his imagination to run wild. In his latest solo exhibition titled Strokes of Imagination, he uses charcoal and strokes to express his inner thoughts about the struggles of the common man. Archie here tonight takes a look at Osuchuku's exhibition at Thought Pyramid in Lagos. <laughs> If you're a lover of the charcoal medium, then Stephen Osuchuku is your man. Even if you've not yet been converted, he will show you more reasons to take another look at this form because of the way he interprets it in his solo show called Strokes of Imagination, featuring over 20 works of art. The Strokes of Imagination is basically telling about lines, 
about tones, about uh, texture, using strokes. So that's why it came about. If you look at every piece of wax, you see lines. Even with the white highlight, you see the white lines. They are actually strokes of different forms. Some are going up horizontal or vertical. You know, some are going sideways and all that. So it's all about strokes. Normally, you can have drawings of um, different effects, smooth uh, dot drawing, uh, dot shading, smooth shading, and all that. You know, or cross shading. But this one is stroke. I call it strokes. You know, it's a kind of technique. The interesting thing about it is that his love for charcoal came from an unusual scenario, but he was able to use it to his advantage and find his own way of expressing it. Basically, I work using charcoal as a waste medium to create words over time. And it's really working well. Everybody know about the usual oil color, acrylic paints, and all that, which are expensive materials. You know, so many people give excuse of not having capital to start something. But I can tell you, in art, it has gone beyond capital, having capital. There are so many waste materials. I'm using charcoal, which we know as a waste material for like roasting corn or drying fish and all that. But this is art, you know, and it's really working out. The exhibition director of the Thought Gallery, Ovia Omashala, believes this artist has been able to use his imagination to produce images, ideas, and sensations. When I saw the pictures, I just wanted to be here. And getting here, I saw somebody who understands what it means to create form. I saw somebody who knows how to manage values. And I saw somebody who observes his environment. This artist is somebody who records things, who is very inquisitive, and it takes it to a, a high level of detail, you know, that will catch your attention. You know, as you come in here, you just be looking at you and be looking at the world around you. You know, he's been able to bring our world to one space. Same old story. Division of labor against all art are just some of the pieces that reveal the strokes of his imagination. We'll talk some more politics. Now another aspirant here, Babajido Somolu, has joined the list of those jostling for the governorship ticket of the All Progressives Congress here in Lagos. Mr. Somolu, who declared his intention today says that there is need to return governance to the people. He goes on to say that Lagos, as a cosmopolitan economy, deserves people-driven reforms in strategic areas of the economy. Still ahead on the news at 10, Mercedes driver Lewis Hamilton cruises to victory in the Singapore Grand Prix to strengthen his hold on this year's World Championship. We have more in sports news. Please stay with us.